by Corals. Um, just give you a little bit about who we are. My name is Lou Shivo, and that's Victor Fornari. We're both two of the three founders of World by Corals. Uh, we brought along Josh, which is our mainly a lot of guy keeps the uh, shop going and the livestock and the husbandry. Well, we're back Victor. home. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, uh, Josh is the one who takes care of uh, our livestock, you know, um, and our equipment, you know. So he's very important to what we do. So since we're going to be showing our show tanks and we're going to have a lot of questions, I wanted to make sure that he was going to be here along with me. Um, we were established in 2006. Uh, we opened our doors in July of 15, 2007. Um, so we've been open a little bit over 10 years. We just celebrated our 10-year anniversary uh, last year, which is a huge milestone for us to be in business for 10 years. Um, in the same location, in the same retail location in Orlando, Florida. So yes, we are kind of like cold and you know getting acclimated to the, uh, the Colorado weather. But um, it's been fun. It's a nice change. You know, it was getting hot in Florida already, so we were kind of uh, happy to get out for the weekend. Yes. Um, so in Florida, it's a little different. We are actually a state certified aquaculture facility. What happens every year, they come out and they inspect our property, making sure we're staying up with the best practices and procedures, what they set forth. They have a manual we had to go over when we first opened up. And check us out, make sure we're not dumping water and, and kind of messing with the environment and stuff like that. So we're, we're bound by them. Um, mainly today, we're going to talk a little about what we do and um, who we are and you know our show tanks mainly. The first tank we're going to talk about is our 500 gallon tank in our showroom. And then Victor, you're going to give a little bit of information about this tank? Yeah, the picture is a little saturated because of the screen. Well, <laughs> this tank has been up for about, uh, I want to say maybe six years old. It's about the dimensions of the tank is uh, 10 feet long, it's uh, 3 feet deep, and it's uh, 27 inches tall. Um, the light that we're using on this tank is uh, 5 Raven Generation 4 lights. Uh, we're using 4 MP60s, you guys can see on the sides. Um, right, right there, yeah. On the bottom, on the back, there's an MP40, and then there's another one in the wall that I think this picture really shows somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, there's one over there on that side. So all together, we're using seven power heads to um, to move flow on this tank. Uh, this tank pretty much house uh, about seven different fish, fish that we have alive for 11 to 12 years. You know. Um, we have a big black tank in there. We have a big um, the regal tank. Uh, it's an empty tank. What else do we have? We have a couple yellow tanks. We have a um, we have a um, black shoulder in there too as well. Yes. So this system, as you guys can see, is uh, run bare bottom. Uh, for those of you guys don't know what bare bottom is, we don't use any substrate. We don't use sand. We don't use crushed coral. Uh, the reason why we do that is. Um, we believe it allows us to control nutrients better and allows us to uh, deliver higher flow to try trying to mimic what happens on the ocean, which is very tough to mimic. And we feel with the use of sand, we can't just, just put enough flow to the tanks, you know? Um, this one right here is right next to the 500-gallon um, tank. Uh, do you guys know who Gasper is? Oh, yeah. Gasper the white tank? Casper the White Tang, have you guys heard of him? Uh, Eric right here is sitting back there. He, um, <laughs> he used to own a company I call uh, Sea Dwelling Creatures, it's a wholesaler company. So he knew that I was after uh, a White Tang. I, I was actually like, man, I've seen videos of a White Tang. I need to get one one day. And for some reason, like four months later, he's like, <laughs> Hey, buddy, do you want to see these rare tanks I got? I think I got a white tank. I'm like, what? <laughs> so Eric over there, he sent me the, uh, the fish. This is in, this happened in summer of 2010. Um, I don't have any small pictures of him. There are some when reef builders, right, Jake? You have them? Um, so this fish came, came pretty much translucent. You couldn't even, it was a little thing. It was super clear. It came with another two aberrant tanks. Um... So he's world famous now for the, not just because his wife, how long we we had him. Jake has been documenting this fish for, man, they talk to each other when they, <laughs> <laughs> the fish gets excited like a little dog, Jake is here, you know? <laughs> So, yeah, this is, a, we call it Casper Home. Recently, Jake, you made a video of it because Jake came to our facility about three or four months ago. He came in and filmed everything and he made a video of Casper. So, again, this is Casper Home. Okay. It's a 293 gallon tank. Um, you guys see, uh, that's a black scope that's next to him. 
It's not a regular black tank, but you guys, just for coloration purposes, you can see the, um, the color that he's got. About um, three years ago, the fish went half yellow for some reason. February 2015. February 2015, and we were kind of panicking. We didn't, we changed, we didn't change anything on the diet. We didn't change lighting at the time, no flow patterns, nothing. The fish just magically decided just to go half white and half yellow. And, um, and again, you can find that on Reef Builders. You know, you can see the pictures of him, how he said, the evolution of him over the years, you know? He almost became the most expensive uh, yellow tank in the world at one point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you guys seen this coral around? Yeah. yeah. No. This is, well, this is the, uh, we call it the world famous uh, WWC original uh, bounce mushrooms. It's some form of Rodactis uh, coral that is sent the whole world into a craze. Uh, <laughs> we have collectors here from Indonesia, such as Vincent. He can tell you that. that it changed the way divers uh, collect things, you know. Uh, until this mushroom came around and it hit so big and Joe breaking mushrooms years ago, mushrooms were seen as throw them in the trash, you know, they're, they're weedy, they take over your tank. Beginners only. They're for beginners only, you yeah. know, and now it just turns out to be that everybody in the whole world is after this mushroom craze because they're easy to care for. And they come in a variety of colors that I keep looking at them every day and I'm like, Man, there's more and more to find every single day. When I think I've seen them all, nope. They keep coming in different colors, different patterns, different sizes. Some of them, I've seen one as big as a eight inch diameter, you know, because that's how big they open. So mushrooms are not just little things the size of a quarter like we're used to seeing in our, in our aquariums. So it's definitely interesting that one mushroom can become so popular, it can do such a thing, you know. Um, this is another coral that is in our 293 gallon um, tank. It's called the WWC Slimeball slime ball and Acropora. Um, I personally have my doubts that this coral is uh, an Anacropora. It's just too similar to an Acropora digitata. The way, the way it looks, the way I can see the skeleton when the coral dies, the grow patterns, it's just... It smells like a monkey. Yeah, it smells like a monkey pour. You guys are going to think we're crazy. So we have a controversy going on in the house. Yeah, that's our own controversy, you yeah. know, but yeah. we go as far as, like, certain coals smell a certain way to us, you know, like when we pull them out of bags and, right, Vincent? <laughs> yeah, they have a very particular smell, but uh, it's a coral that is very nice. It's easy to care for. It grows very fast. It's at the top of the, the tank on the right-hand side, you know. It's pretty cool. We call this legendary because we've been brewing this tank for about three or four years. And it's our biggest tank in-house. It's 900 gallons. Uh, this tank is uh, 12 feet long. It's four feet uh, front to back, and it goes 30 inches tall. Uh, it, it's, it's mainly dominated by aquaporas. Every single aquapora has been documented. We did this uh, build thread on uh, reef2reef.com. You can go into our forums, and you can see the 900-gallon build thread. And it shows some detail from the time that we built, we put the tank in there, uh, from the time that we put, from the time that we put the filtration, uh, from the time that that we put every single coral that you see in there, it was put as a single fragment. Uh, again, it's documented. You can see every single one how we put them in there. And today it's just growing just furiously. It's just. It's really that gorgeous, guys. Now, how old is this one again? In November 2014, we put the live rock, the aquascape. Again, uh, if you if you type uh, Worldwide Coals and Reef Builders, you see all the articles that Jake has wrote about us. One of them is uh, the aquascape that we did a time-lapse video of the of the 900-gallon tank. You see me in there moving the rocks around, and the same structure is still there today, you know? So it's such a cool thing to document the tank from... from so the glass arrived to you just putting it there today and you can literally go there and today see it. Most people when we open the farm to the public I let them see it from the top. We have a little walkway in the back of the tank. And it's pretty impressive, you know, just the way everything the coloration, um 
Um, you know, a lot, a lot of people have been asking me lately, what do I give uh, the, uh, the coloration uh, to? It's, it's two things, seriously. Uh, there's a company, many of you guys, at least you have a gigantic tank. Uh, there's a company called Ventorate that produces uh, powerheads that produce massive amounts of flow. And I mean massive, the smallest powerhead, I think, is like 7,000 gallons of laminar flow. The medium one, with the ones that we use for this uh, big tank, they are, uh, I think, 16,000 gallons an hour each, and we use two of them, plus a bunch of MP60s, you know. But the main thing is uh, about a year ago, we switch. Uh, we used to have metal highlights and T5 lightings, which it was great for us. Uh, we switched to um, radiant lights to uh, generation four. It took about two months of adjustment, but the colors. I mean, you look at it from the top. I'm not even kidding you guys. The tank is just jumps at you. It's like, yes. These are some of the colors you see in this tank. You know, that that happened naturally in the tank. That was just a regular, uh, like maroon millipora, and again, because of the, the screen, you can't see it as clear, but you see all the green part right there on the top left. Mm -hmm. That olive just got grafted naturally on the tank. We're not sure why that happens, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this coral, uh, there's an acropora that everybody's going pretty crazy over, because when the polyps come out to feed, they're neon, neon, electric pink, you know? And for some reason, some of the workers say it reminds them that it looks like a budgie smuggler. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> so we call it the budgie smuggler. So this is on the white lights. This is a top-down picture. Uh, on the white lights, you guys can see how it gets really hot pink. And then when the polyps actually come out, they're pink. The next picture, if I'm right, I think we have a picture of the authentic lighting. Mm. Again. You can find these pictures on our, in, on our Instagram page. Just look up Worldwide Corals, and you can see the picture. I mean, the, the polyps literally come out, and they're hot pink. I've never seen it before to so, uh, so such a contrast when they come out, you know? And the acropora collectors are going crazy over it, you know? Uh, white chocolate. <laughs> Another celebrity fish. <laughs> we got this fish from a company called Asiat Aquaculture. They got this fish, uh, we got it roughly two years ago. I was very uh, hesitant about purchasing this fish because you don't know if these fish are going to keep their color. You know, we've seen in Pax experience, you pay a lot of money for this fish and then and they don't do well in captivity and or they tend to change colors, you know. And I've seen videos of uh, David Saxby, which is a person uh, in Europe, for those of you who don't know. He's a high-end collector of fish. You know, he's got a gigantic tank. I think on the 1,500-gallon range. He's got one or two along the range. It's looking similar to this one, you know. And we call him white chocolate. He's white, yellow, and black, as you guys can see in the picture. And those are true colors. You guys are welcome to come to the store. Say, I was on the talk, and I see white chocolate. We'll give you a quick peek of them, you know. Uh, this one is, uh, we keep them behind the scenes, but... Uh, we'll definitely show it to you guys. <laughs> Just hold us to it. <laughs> uh, a little story about this one. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Victor, take that tank down. <clears throat> Why? It looks bad. Josh, be patient. It's a new tank. There was another nano in the tank that we're going to get to. So this tank now has been set up for about 14 months from scratch. And it's fantastic. There's no, you can't see the live rock. <laughs> Uh, you walk into a store, it's only 30 gallons. The reason why we do this, we show the people, you don't need a 80 gallon tank, a 150 gallon tank, 200 gallon tank. You don't need a gigantic protein skimmer. You don't even need a sump. I'm not saying you don't need it. It depends on what is it that you're looking to do, you know? So everything is doable. It's, it's, it all depends on how you do your husbandry and how you take care of your tank, you know? Everything is possible. This is how the tank looks from the top, from the top. Really it's a, a 30 tank right there. Yeah, it's a big variety, you know, <laughs> just placing the coral the right way. Um, I make fun of Josh every time I walk by. The time I go, Josh, how's the JBJ looking? It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> So he's not happy about that, you know? <laughs> I was partial to the 24 that we had. Here it is. You see why. Here so it this was the old champion of the nanos, you know. This is when you first walk in, which is still beautiful to us. 
But we believe the other one overtook it, took the throne, you know? This is, uh, how big is this thing, Josh? It's um, 24 by 18. 24 by 18. It's just two feet by a feet and a half, and it runs with one MP10. We love the flow in there. We, we get a little wave running every so often. Most of the time, we keep it on a um, random flow. Uh, this is my tank from home. I had to move, and um, I took it out to the farm. This is a 65-gallon tank. Uh, this, we call it the most simple tank in the world. Just uh, do your water changes, uh, do your A and B. Uh, we have an MP40, a single MP40 that we keep it on our reef mode. And uh, just keep the lights on our steady. We don't change anything on it. There's only a couple of rashes in there and everything just seem, seems to be driving to levels that sometimes we don't understand why they're just growing so much. For the record, that doesn't get A and B. That's nothing but water changes. You stopped it now? Wow. <laughs> there you go. Just water changes. <laughs> this is like that for some reason there's a, it's under a regular screen you can see the video. It doesn't show the right way. Uh, in, the, in our coral farm, for those of you guys who don't know, we have a separate separate building from our retail facility where we farm all of our corals. We do our receiving. Uh, we do our cutting, we do our farming, we do our quarantining. This is where we clean the corals. Um, as you guys can see, it's a large facility. Uh, it has over, uh, we use all radio lights. You were asking me in the back about TFI lighting. Uh, the entire facility is run by uh, Generation 3 and Generation 4 radio lighting. Um, the entire facility also is being run by... Um, Ecotech Marina, Marina MP40 uh, for the flow. Uh, each raceway has six lights. Each uh, raceway has six MP40 lights. I'm sorry, uh, power heads. The reason why we do three on each side so we can um, do the flow from one side and then randomly from the other side, we're able to just do more random flow that you can simply imagine, you know, by using the quick link. Uh, this is a top down of the farm. You guys can see how much coral we have in this place. Um, we uh we roughly keep in house uh, well over twenty to twenty five thousand fragments. We have grow out colonies that I've been keeping for close to twenty years. Some of them, you know. Um, again, some of these tanks. Uh, half of this facility we do everything aquaculture, and half of the, this facility is wild corals that we care for for months and then we cut them. Um, Done with this slide? Yep, last one. All right. <laughs> you guys have any questions based on the pictures that you saw? Go ahead. Uh, so you've got a mix of bare bottom and sand beds. Yes. If you're having such great success with the bare bottom tanks, why not just do everything bare bottom? Uh, I'm very passionate. We as a company, we're very passionate about aquariums. And just, we like to... Um, Try different things, okay. You know, and, and we we've, we've been very successful at keeping sand, you know. Okay. Um, no, no specific <laughs> reason, you know. Does it goes the same way too, like you were saying before? You can't have everything just the same. You have to have a different flavor. Not everybody wants to have that. Sure. You know, if they want an Equitech light, they can put an Equitech light. We also have a small aquarium with a Max Spec on it. Okay. We have a show. We have a small aquarium with a Kessel on it. You know, so. A lot of these things work. What do you run in your sums? What do we run in our sums? Uh, most of them we run a protein skimmer, a carbon reactor, and uh, we keep it that basic. We really don't use a lot of things. Filter socks. Filter socks. Thank you. There you go. On your two bigger tanks, your 500 or your 900, do you house any rasses because you have a bare bottom system? You know what? Some of them are known to uh, go on the sand. We don't. We have a trick for it. If any of you guys have a bare bottom tank, you can grab you can grab a Tupperware container and you can put sand in it and you can put a small hole on top and eventually the, the rest within a day or two will find its way to it. So we're, we can, we're talking about the bare bottom tank and one thing that was fascinating to me about what you guys do is you add that layer of... Um, 
Is that Starboard? Talk, Marine talk board? about yeah. Starboard a little bit. Mar but, Starboard is pretty much, you know, there's no reason for it. It's just for, so if the, a rock doesn't fall and you fracture the glass, it's just for safety purposes. But the coolest thing is a marine board, pretty much. Uh, you guys see now, it's pretty much like a kitchen coating board. That's the material, boats. pretty much, that yeah. it is. It just kind of can absorb somewhat of a punch. It's very durable. It can take salt water. It doesn't dissolve. Uh, the best part of it, again, is like I said earlier, is you can deliver tons of flow. And uh, you can grow corals, actually, in it. So if you look at a lot of our pictures, if you find them online, and you look from the top downs, you see corals even on the bottom. You can grow in Croston Montiporas. You can do anything, anything that grows, anything that grows. If it grows, you can put it there. The same way you would put it on a, on a rock or on the back wall, you can do it on the floor. So it's just extra real estate, you know? And I'd rather look at more cool than just look at sand. But I like sometimes the, the look of sand when you can leave some open space for open static. So I'm able to appreciate that as well. Yes, yes, we do. We call ourselves very aggressive feeders. Uh, one of the things that we do is uh, we personally feed our tanks once a week, reef roids, you know, from our collection, you know, they're just, especially when they, we first get them to get them to take off, we see great results. Uh, any, most of you guys seen videos when you get a core and you feed them, how the tentacles come out, and you'll be surprised the results that you see. Don't forget that corals are animals, you know, they have a mouth, they have a digestive system, you know, so... They need nutrients, you know. Uh, one thing we were talking earlier regarding with food, we run bare bottom tanks. Regarding with bare bottom tanks, if we don't feed multiple times a day, we notice our corals go pale. Just the nutrients, very easy to keep your nutrients low because what happens is all the waste from the fish tanks, you know, when you run bare bottom, you're able to see it just sitting there as a pile of dirt. So you just grab a hose and you get it out. When you have sand, the dirt mixes with the sand, and you're you're like you think it's clean, but it's not so clean, and then it's just things like that happen, you know. But that's why we prefer to run bare bottom, and that's why we have to feed so many times. One thing regarding feeding, since you guys, I recommend when you feed one rule of thumb: make sure everything gets consumed. You can feed more than once a day, as long as you follow that rule. If you're feeding, and any any amount of food is going down the drain, any amount of food hits the bottom and the fish look like they're too busy catching the other food, you're feeding too much, you're going to fail on this hobby. So it's important that you, you know that, you know? Anybody else? <coughs> Any questions? Do you run any type of um, refugium or phosphate? Uh, we nutrient? don't run refugiums. I've seen great tanks in the past with that. I just feel like it's just so much more maintenance that you have to do. And with today's equipment, protein skimmers are so strong nowadays that you have to turn them, turn them down sometimes. We've seen ourselves sometimes just turning turn them off for a weekend, for a week, just because we're seeing everything just too clean, too sterile, you know. But you and can too clean it. Yes, sure. yes, you Very can. Easy. If you skimmers, if you're doing too many water changes, if you're just scraping every piece of algae and you're changing this, you're doing, yes, you need, you, need, you need some sort of dirt in the tank, you know. That's why you need live rock and things like that. It's very, very important, you know. Yes. So on the 500 and 900, are you doing A and B or a reactor? We're doing a calcium reactor on both of those. And the 200 and, and I know the they're going to get thirsty at uh, our elevation. And the 200. <laughs> <laughs> We're thirsty too. And the 200. <laughs> <laughs> In the uh, 293 gallon, we're running A and B right now. So how much does that tank chew up each day? Oh my gosh, 90 and 90 and all day. Um, it is 293. It's like 145 yeah. notes. Basically. Yeah, you know what it's twice a day. <laughs> That's twice a day. So roughly 300. Basically. Wow. But the tank just grows and grows and grows. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of stony corals. You know, versus yes. soft. So it makes a big difference. And so you're dosing magnesium in that too. On yes, you have to. You want to keep your levels of AMB up, you have to keep. So are you dosing that daily? We the buffer the salt water. Oh, okay. So when we do a water change, we'll actually add an elevated amount of calcium and magnesium, which will dilute itself into the system. Um, but that prevents us from having to add more calcium and magnesium while it's running. Gotcha. Very important that you keep. I, I would say magnesium is just as important, if not more important, than the A and B, because if you don't have your magnesium levels correct, you will have a hard time maintaining um, calcium and alkalinity. It's, it's often under talk, you know.
कई बार जो काल सुना हो कलेने की काल सुना हो कलेने की So yes. on those tanks that you're maintaining with water changes, what's your water change schedule? You know what? Um, some vary, you know, depending on, on, on the water testing, but usually we aim for like every two weeks we try to. And like 20% every two weeks? 10%. 10%. 10%. If we see an issue, then we might jump it to weekly. Sometimes we might see a tank that we've been doing it every two weeks. Uh, and you don't have to. Again, like I was saying earlier, have, a, have some sort of understanding with what's going on with your um, tank. With the tank. Yeah. If, if, you don't, if you don't have that understanding with the tank, oh, it worked for me three months ago and you're gonna continue. And I, I see I see so many places, so many fishers that I walk in and I see the acupora is pale, pale, like white. Just, you see growth, but they look pale. And, and I look and I say, what happened? I'm like, all you have to do is just turn your lights down and do a little more feeding, short off your protein skin. And it's, just, it's just understanding of of what your course look like again you know like i was saying earlier it's like a plant or a tree get to know your tank you know by looking at it over time you know you identify it's doing well the color's good it look healthy Since something happens since last night it's pretty busy yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> too often i think that there's a general misconception that there's a certain guideline that you have to follow in order to keep a coral colorful you know and that's not the case what he's saying is that every coral is going to give you a different result depending on something that you do you know, yes, you know, can hone in on that one particular thing and focus on that coral, and the rest of the corals do well around it, then you know that maybe that's what needed to have been changed with your thing. For instance, a lot of people all the time, what are your settings on the radios? What are your settings? We give you the settings, and most likely it will work, but it's no guarantee because your bio load is different than my bio load. You know, two tanks are never the same, you know, so... I get hate mail sometimes. Like, <laughs> 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 no joke. Like, you send her a schedule to somebody, and then next week you're like, well, all my corals died. <laughs> I didn't tell you to put it a certain intent. You ask us how it works for us. You know? <laughs> Jay? So, anytime I'm doing a video and I'm speaking with experts, uh, we discuss a lot of different things, but I'd like to ask you guys. You know, what is one tip that you want people to walk away from your talk with? You know, what's the, the, the one piece of advice that's going to get them the furthest? The most important thing. All right. Yeah. Easy one. <laughs> Easy. Go to research. All right. Stability. <laughs> one word. That's it. What do I mean by that? You, you can have your salinity for your reef tank at 19. Let's call it, forget about 19. 33. Okay. Your phosphates are through the roof. Your nitrates can be 100. You can have poor flow. As long as things don't change, you're going to notice that things thrive. The biggest mistake people do is, oh, my tank's not looking good. His is looking good. What are you using? I'm using ABC salt. Oh, I'm going to do it too. It changes. When two, three weeks later it doesn't work, so they don't even they and they don't people don't change multiple things at once when you change things, and the grass is not always green across the street. What do I mean by that? Don't you think that a light or or a chemical or salt or or a product is gonna or a protein skimmer? Oh, I'm gonna put this protein skimmer and this is my tank. It's gonna be my problems are fixed. Sure, yeah. It's just how much involvement you have in your tank. So it's stability. Don't be changing too many things at once, and that's that's the best advice I can give you guys. Pay attention to the results if you do change. Something. Real quick, Josh started working for us five and a half years ago, and about two three years ago he wanted to do a couple changes, and I fought him to change things forever because I was like, if it's working, I don't want to change it, you know. So he slowly but surely he goes, let me do one thing at a time, let me test it on this tank. And as long as you do it slowly, if you change your salt tomorrow, wait two or three months. But don't change your salt and expect better results if you're not going to be observing your tank, you know. So you have to understand what you're looking for. Are you looking? Do, do you understand your tank before you change your salt? Do you knew every? Do you do you knew every every corner of your tank? Do you understand every hole in there? You know? Do you know? Do you know exactly how your tank works? If you understand that and you are into your tank and you change something, you'll be like, I told to Josh, he can be his own. Like, Josh, what changed in tank 33? He goes, I don't know, nothing. Did the lights change? No. Did we feed more? No. Check the parameters? No. Okay, well, some of the cores look a little light. Let's drop the lights. 
what am I supposed to do? Nothing changed? You worked before? Let's leave it alone? No. So, again, that's the main thing, Jake. Just stability, guys. Even if you have bad parameters, stability. You can have good parameters, but you, you're constantly changing them. You won't succeed. For instance, I see people often come into our facility and they walk in and they say, can you test my water? And I go, man, before, I'm not even going to continue. Your salinity is 35. It happens mm -hmm. often. They go, how is that possible? Go, Look, man, it's 35. It's your tank. It's not mine. What should I do to change it? I go, the first thing you have to do is don't drop it to level of where it's at. That's the worst thing you can do. Why is that? Think about it. It's going to be another shock. That tank, you didn't raise it from 25, from 24, 25 to 35. It went to 26 next week because whatever you were doing, it was racing it. Either sometimes you tap it off with salt water or whatever the case may be, you know. So it is slowly but surely when you were doing water changes, that water went up. So now what are you going to do? Just don't shop the tank. If you get lost in the woods for three weeks and you're not eating and you're dehydrated, you're not going to go to a buffet. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the same concept here, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing, it's the same concept.